Let's get this thing knocked off so we can uh, kick back and enjoy ourselves. We'll get the uh, guys from Gore back up again at uh, the conclusion of proceedings to get us into the wee small hours. <clears throat> just uh, just getting an update actually from out at the Les George Oval. As you probably know, Damien McKenzie uh, making his return. So spare a thought for Damien to uh, about 6 o'clock uh, tonight when it was absolutely coming in sideways and the bloke's got to go out to Les George and play a game of footy. I don't know if he was rethinking things there. He scored seven tries tonight. No, I don't know. They haven't, uh, <laughs> they haven't actually updated the score yet, but uh, if we have breaking news, Sav's on the job for me. We'll see. We'll get a new sound on it. We'll see if we can give you an update uh, from Damien McKenzie's return to footy. All right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, let's, uh, let's go because, as we say, we are at the sharp end of the evening. We have two of our sports person categories to go. First one of these is to uh, look at the year gone by and a bit of a nod to the future as well because every finalist in this category, Angie's got massive things out in front of them. Yep, they really do. This is the future of our province here that we're about to announce, folks. Um, these are the shining stars of Morohiku. It is usually our biggest category. Um, I believe it was again this year, Nick. Um, this is because we, we do well. We do well at this stuff. So this is, a, this is a great time. All right, um, now also with an eye to the future, not just the nominees in this category, the sponsor of the Junior Sports Person of the Year is, and has been for quite some time, don't know if it's the 11 years of hubby, um, but they are Vodafone, of course. So that's another great fit, I say. Let's welcome up the owner of Vodafone in Vicargo, Joe Sharp. Um, oh, before I start, um, good evening everyone, and uh, I just thought I'd do a wee giveaway. So there might be out there somewhere, under somebody's seat, a little symbol, a 5G symbol, which is our latest technology that we've rolled out in Southland. So if we look, it could be um, hard to find. Which one do you want? Just a wee distraction. <laughs> it's there. Might be over here somewhere. It's a little piece of paper. And it's under a chair. Well, the manager put it somewhere. Where's the manager? <laughs> here we go. Ah! Woohoo! Phew! <laughs> That was going to be awkward. <laughs> oh, oh, that's nice. It is your lucky night. In case you can't see everybody, that's Linda Sutterby who has just won that, that prize there. So she's having a great night. Right, sorry, John. Winner, winner. The winners get the prizes. Uh, um, <clears throat> So again, good evening everyone. It's great to be um, once again representing Vodafone and supporting the Junior Sports Person of the Year Award. And uh, thanks to the team at Active Southland who put in all the hard work to make this event happen every year. This is now our 10th year, so Andy, you're right, um, of involvement and it's always exciting to be involved in celebrating Southland youth and their achievements in the sporting arena. With so many distractions for kids these days, it is impressive to see the focus and determination they have displayed resulting in being amongst the very best in their fields. We are very proud to be part of recognising the nominees, um, more often than not their parents, uh, supporters and of course the ultimate winner. So now without further ado, the finalists for the Vodafone Junior Sportsperson of the Year Award are... While COVID denied Cormac Buchanan the chance to defend his domestic titles over the past season, he was still able to look back fondly on becoming the first New Zealander to contest motorcycling's British Talent Cup, with three podium finishes to boot. Currently in his second season competing internationally, Cormac continues to go full throttle. Cormac Buchanan. With three national records to his credit, Connor Douglas continues to forge a path in paracycling. A member of Paracycling New Zealand's high performance group, Connor won gold in the time trial at the national champs and returned from the Oceania champs with a clutch of medals as well. 
On track for more success, Connor Douglas. As well as success with the Southland Girls High School and Invercargill Netball Centre under 18 teams, Losa Fafita has gone on to earn selection in the highly competitive New Zealand Secondary Schools netball team and been selected as a Southern Steel training partner. A netball talent to watch, Losa Fafita. A dominant performance in the under-17 division at the National Track Cycling Champs saw Magnus Jameson medal in every event he entered, including three golds and a national record in the team sprint with George Manson. Magnus is also the Cycling Southland Junior Club captain. Keep an eye out for Magnus Jameson. Despite being an endurance rider, Ronan Shearing headed off the best under-19 sprinters in the country to win the National Junior Kieran title in Cambridge and earn a world ranking of 15th for the discipline. An outstanding achievement after recovering from a serious mountain bike accident in 2021. A cut above, Ronan Shearing. Despite being only 15, Levi Stout has won just about everything going in the growing sport of disc golf. The national disc golf champion won the South Island Championship on his home course at Queen's Park and was runner-up at the New Zealand Disc Golf Championships in Wellington, along with a host of other victories. Aiming high, Levi Stout. Described as humble and hard-working, Jack Taylor has made the most of his rugby opportunities. The Southland boys hooker has had an outstanding Highlanders under-18 campaign, was selected in the New Zealand Barbarians under-18 team and has been rewarded with development contracts with both the Southland Stags and the Highlanders. A talent to follow, Jack Taylor. And the winner of the 2022 Vodafone Junior Sports Person of the Year Award is Losa Fafita. <laughs> a lot of kit there Lossa. that's a great one mate cool. <laughs> thank you to Vodafone it really came together it feels like this young woman has been on the verge of greatness and success for quite some time but it just all came together last year what clicked how did it change what what happened um well last year where do I start <laughs> um my last year at uh, Southland Girls High School and at the end of the year, I get a text from Ranga um, saying that she was looking to see if I could be a training partner for the Southern Steel. And after, yeah, a good season with, um, at school, um, we placed, where did we come? Second in the OSS um, Secondary Schools um, tournament here in Southland. And then, um, what else happened? <laughs> Um, New Zealand Secondary Schools, yeah, netball um, camp. Um, the we weren't able to um, go away to the other two camps in Wellington because of COVID. But um, yeah, we're selected to be in the squad, which was cool. So, yeah. Absolutely amazing. Now you've got the very different levels, aren't they? So yeah. you've gone from yeah. you know uh, premier grade in Invercargill with uh, Southland Girls High to that next step of you know national honours up to ANZP. So there's there's kind of these four distinct levels that you've gone up. Has it been a noticeable step up each time? Yeah, no, they're all different um, levels, and it's just the adapting to how like I form basically, yeah, and just. Um, taking every opportunity as they can. Yeah. Oh, quite right too. Um, what's been the biggest um, learning that you've taken from this? Is it uh, that complete athlete life? Is it the fitness? Which would you say is the biggest learning that you've taken out of this whole journey? Um, um, taking every opportunity with two hands and also just balancing 
life and school and sport and every other commitment. Yeah, so is life. school yeah. staying up to up to date? Those yeah. grades looking yeah. okay? Yeah, so far. <laughs> <laughs> so far is good. Now, um, here's a bit of a personal question. I know I've got a fellow all-star in the uh, in the room here. Uh, Lossa, are you bringing back what you're learning out in these beautiful um, opportunities that you're getting and taking and deserving? Are you bringing those back to your school team? Because by crikey, it felt like it when Girls High handed all-stars their bottoms on the netball court a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> Yeah, um, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm always looking out for those girls back at school. It's good to um, play against them on Saturday and Thursday comps. So, yeah, just always supporting them as well. Yes, no, you are in any team that you're in and, or sharing their knowledge with. I tell you what, it's been a tough year for the All-Stars so far. Don't feel sorry about beating up on an old woman, though. Lossa, that's OK. Um, so, look, honestly, so much ahead of you. What's the ultimate dream? Where are you? Are you in the black dress? Yeah, the silver thrones. That's the ultimate dream. I tell you what, this young woman is going to make it. Ladies and gentlemen, our Vodafone Junior Sports Person of the Year, Lossa Fafita. Thank you. Well done. Now, go get your photo from the first lovely lady. Outstanding. Real window into the future uh, there, or the now actually as well. Uh, it's uh, fantastic stuff and uh, thanks as always uh, Joe, for your generous support for the Vodafone Junior Sports Person of the Year. And so we come to this, our final award of the evening, the ILT Senior Sports Person of the Year. But before we find out about this year's recipient, we have in the room with us the inaugural winner of this award from way back in 1953-54. Neil Hamilton, where are you? Neil. You still with us, Neil, or have Neil. we lost you? Are we, the are we down the, the back? We're way back. No, we can see down there the back there. There he is. Give him a round of applause, folks. <laughs> Great to have you here, mate. Uh, Neil, of course, was a leading Southland swimmer in the mid-1950s, broke uh, the New Zealand 220-yard backstroke record and was a member of a strong Southland team which finished runner-up in the uh, Freiburg Shield, the provincial competition which was part of the uh, national championships uh, as well. Been a regular attendee of the uh, awards, so lovely to have you again here, uh, mate, and wonderful to have you uh, here. Let's give him one more, uh, um, uh, one more round of applause. <laughs> Neil Hamilton. All right, so those are the sho shoes that we have to fill uh, here tonight with another name that will be etched onto the honours board uh, that are uh, looking fantastic out in the uh, foyer here at Ascot Park Hotel uh, tonight. We have an outstanding lineup of uh, finalists, as we said. It has been an Olympic year, uh, and all of them are uh, worthy. So to tell us uh, all about that, and also say a few words uh, for the ILT Senior Sports Person of the Year, let's welcome up the uh, Chair of ILT, Mr Alan Dennis. Thank you. I'm still getting my head over that talk from Bailey. It was just so special. It's going to stay with me for a long time. But thank you, Bailey. Welcome, kia ora to everybody. Um, I think I'll start by just welcoming our three mayors because I think they've been sitting there quietly all night and we've forgotten maybe to acknowledge them. So welcome to Sir Tim, Tracy Hicks and Gary Tong. So how about a warm welcome to our three mayors. Thank you. <clears throat> So on behalf of the ILT, I'd like to take the opportunity to congratulate all tonight's finalists and especially those who are lucky enough to be the category winners. On your behalf, I'd also like to thank Brendan um, and Active South for the fine job that they've done. Tony, of course, um, was on the stage earlier and thanks to them. The adjudicators, who I've noted here, were a difficult job as to compare apples with oranges and thinking there, I think it's more like possibly... Um, diced fruit or a fruit salad, isn't it? Because there are so many different categories and what a difficult task you have. And lastly, obviously, to thank our two um, compeers just for a marvellous job tonight, but I imagine they'll be thanked later. You'll be aware that the ILT is always keen to recognise and reward those in our community who achieve success through their commitment. And like so many other businesses, the ILT group has faced challenges over the past 12 months and more. Those in the hospitality business will know what I'm talking about when you're employing something like 600 staff and 25 businesses. I think they're hit terribly, but Chris and Angie and their team have managed that superbly. And boy, are we looking forward to the opening of the Langlands together. That's special. <laughs> 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 
So while I have talked about some of the problems, let's look at some of the brighter things that's happening. And I think it's heartening to see positive signs re-emerging. And just wearing my stadium hat for a moment, just to remind you, if you don't already know, tomorrow starts a multicultural food festival and there's over 100 stalls. So if you're not doing anything tomorrow, pop in and enjoy the food. And if you're not doing anything next Wednesday, something also is pretty special. ILT Stadium is hosting the National Gymnastic Champs. Right? They start... They, they start next Wednesday, and I understand there are 938 competitors, together with all their support personnel, and I've got a note here that will add a jingle to the pockets of the retailers and retailers in Invercargill. In conclusion, you know that the ILT group will continue to support the Southland community, sports and recreation. The eight finalists of the ILT Senior Sportsman of the Year are... After making two appearances for the Highlanders off the bench in 2020, loose head prop Ethan De Groot made huge strides in 2021. An outstanding Super Rugby campaign earned him an all-black test debut against Fiji in Dunedin and selection for the end-of-year tour. A rugby star on the rise, Ethan De Groot. In January, Julie O'Connell became Bowl Southland's first ever New Zealand para champion winning the Open Pairs title with Carolyn Crawford from Dunedin. Julie was also a member of the Waverley team, which won the Southland Open Fours final. Bowling them over, Julie O'Connell. A massive throw of 62.40 metres secured Tori Peters her sixth national senior javelin title in March and earned her automatic qualification for this year's Commonwealth Games. She now holds the national, resident and all-comers record for Javelin and has big goals for Birmingham. The golden arm from Gore, Tori Peters. It's been a meteoric rise for Amy Rule since first picking up a rugby ball in her final years at high school. The talented front rower made her debut for the Blackburns on their Northern Hemisphere tour and was part of the Foundation Matatu team in Super Rugby Opiki. The future is bright for Amy Rule. An increasingly influential member of the Black Fern 7 squad, Alina Saili last year became the first Southland woman to win an Olympic gold medal as part of the all-conquering Seven Sisters in Tokyo. A proud Southlander, Alina has made a point of taking her gold medal on tour around Southland schools. A fabulous role model, Alina Saili. A tireless performer in the midcourt for both the Southern Steel and Silver Ferns, Shannon Saunders has now brought up 85 games in the black dress of New Zealand. In 2021, Shannon captained a young and unheralded steel team to a home elimination final. Stealing the show, Shannon Saunders. It's been another big year for Corbin Strong, who made his Olympic debut with an 11th place finish in the Madison in Tokyo and had two top 10 placings at the World Track Cycling Championships as well as signing with a World Tour team and a podium place in the inaugural UCI Champions Track League. Racing from strength to strength, Corbin Strong. Starved of genuine opportunities to compete both domestically and internationally, triathlete Olivia Thornbury has had to make every start count. She certainly did that when she claimed the Oceania Cup Sprint title in April this year in a field which included former Olympian Andrea Hansen. Just try and stop Olivia Thornbury. Well, Your Worships, ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the 2022 ILT Senior Sportsperson of the Year is Alina Saili. <laughs> So we've got a lecky who's coming forward on behalf of the Saeli family to accept. Uh, Alina, as you can imagine, actually is on duty for uh, the uh, Black Ferns. Uh, had a training in Tauranga today. Uh, was going to try and get herself uh, down here, but unfortunately, because of all these bloody gymnasts that are coming, no, <laughs> because of uh, Air New Zealand's schedule, uh, couldn't get down much as she would like to. So 
We are going to take our life. I've got not nervous about anything tonight. This is the only nervous moment that we've got. We're going to try and actually dial her up on the screen. So let's do our best here. Wish us well. Hopefully this works. There you are. Alina. Hello. Can you see me? <laughs> oh, good. Are you, Sorry, in pr- are, you, are, are, are you in prison? No, not quite. Okay, good. Not like last year. Great stuff, mate. Thank you so much for making yourself available. Uh, tell us about this. You're the IOT South and Sports Person of the Year. How good's that? Yeah, um, I don't know words, to be honest. I guess when I saw the lineup with all the other athletes, um, pretty stoked to come up against some of them, but I guess... I don't know. It's just something I do now for work, so to get like these sort of accolades, it's just a bonus, I guess. So humble, so humble. Has it sunk in? You're the first Southland woman to win an Olympic yeah. medal. Has that sunk in? <laughs> Thank you. Um, to be honest, it, it hasn't. Um, I think more so because I haven't actually been home to show everyone my medal and to actually come home and be able to share it with as many people as I can. So that's probably my next time I come back home is to be able to show all the schools and anyone who wants to see it and just, um, yeah, be able to share the experience of a gold medal around, I guess. Hey, so t- take us back to, the, to that experience over there, the, the whole Olympic experience. Obviously, it's, uh, it finishes with the fairy tale result, but uh, that, mu- that must have been something yeah. through, the, uh, through the whole process that you went through. Yeah, definitely. I was actually injured about three months out from the from the games, so it was actually quite a journey for me to get there. I had learned so much, so I was actually kind of grateful I went through that sort of dip and that low. So for me as an athlete, it was probably one of the best things that could have happened to me in my career, so yeah, extremely grateful for that. And then somehow, I guess, through some hard work, determination, being able to make it to the 12 and make it to the games, and then with the team uh, win a gold medal, yeah, I don't know, that's like... It's how dreams come true, I guess. I was just really lucky. How long did it take you to come down from that and then get back into the grind? Um, oh, coming down, it was actually kind of easy because we were in quarantine straight after. So, yeah, it's a bit of a help. <laughs> but as soon as I got out, it was really nice to connect back with my family and be able to share experiences with them. But uh, we've got Com Games coming up again, so it's back on the grind now. Totally, and that's the wonderful thing. On behalf of the room and South, congratulations. You're off to Birmingham. Let's give her another round of applause. Why not, eh? <laughs> you need to realise this is the loudest they've been all night. Has <laughs> it? I Seriously, appreciate it. You know? I think they like you. I think I'm getting the vibe they like you. So t- tell us about what happens between now and then. What's, uh, you know, what are you doing in terms of putting finishing touches on preparation? Yep, so we've just finished our last training session here in Tauranga, so we're based, um, based here, and we have three groups left this week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, so we have a pre-camp in Scotland for a week, and then we'll head to the um, Olympic Village, oh, Olympic Village, sorry about that, Com Games Village in Birmingham, and then, um, yeah, go from there and hopefully come back with gold again. Oh, well done, Elena. I tell you what, and you can say Olympic Village when you're an Olympian. That's actually okay. You know, you can just <laughs> you can use that for the rest of your life. To be fair. <laughs> <laughs> Nice work, mate. Well, listen, on behalf of uh, everyone, uh, you know, we can't thank you enough for the uh, all that you're doing, obviously, uh, in terms of taking South into the world. Uh, and uh, to be honest, in a stacked field, you were a runaway winner of this uh, event, which is a real credit to you, and we mean that sincerely. Alina Sayeli, congratulations. You're the ILT South and Sports Person of the Year. You also realise that had you not answered, I would have just played your TikTok channel over and over. Oh, no. <laughs> so we did have a fallback position. Give her a round of applause as we say bye. Thank you. Thank you. We got there. Yes. I love the it when a plan comes together. Through. How good's that though, eh? Fantastic stuff and so good that she uh, was able to make herself available uh, as well. And I think anyone will know uh, you know, that, that uh, she's done it herself, but uh, the development that you can see in, in a uh, young lady like that, who's now an integral member of uh, New Zealand women's rugby, is something pretty special. So uh, 
That is a fitting way to finish things. It fine? absolutely is. Love it. And, and what a great night it's been. This has been a wonderful room. Thank you so, so much for being a part of it with us. Uh, so that is the end of the formal part of the evening. Massive congratulations to all of our deserving nominees and winners tonight. It's been a privilege to be here with you, uh, especially given the year that we've all been through again. Absolutely. So uh, let's uh, give a big thank you to uh, all of our sponsors that make this evening uh, possible. The Invercargill Licensing Trust, Vodafone, South and Kia, Rico, uh, BDO, Community Trust South, Creation Signs, NZ Mead, Lion and the South and Times. Give them a round of applause, folks. <laughs> Not possible without you all. Anna mahi nui to the Southern Girls High School Kapahaka Rupu, and thanks again to Bailey Unahi. Wasn't she fantastic, everyone? Thanks also to uh, the wonderful team at Active South, and Brendan mentioned uh, earlier, uh, Laura and Nathan. Let's be honest, mostly Laura, a little bit of Nathan. No, just kidding, mate. <laughs> Both of them have done an outstanding job in terms of pulling this uh, together and uh, getting you know, two, uh, the two of us to the two finish what? line as well. I was going to say something <laughs> no, there I no. shouldn't have, which was very good, so we do appreciate uh, it uh, as well. And of course the South and Amateur Sports Trust uh, who have made it all possible for us to come and celebrate a night like this. Uh, thanks also to the Escott Park Hotel team and thank you all for coming and celebrating with us. And I hope that unlike me, you actually do have your dancing shoes on because crash course are amazing and they're going to take us into the wee hours of the night. Thank you everyone for coming for our 2022 <laughs> Southland Sports Awards. Good night. <laughs>